get 16 to 24 inches. 16 by 24, evergreen. Lavender flowers and late summer. That'd be pretty. I like the color. Like, especially if yeah. it's this time of year and then further in the summer, I can like add more purple flowers. This is so cool too. I really like that too. Jazz hands, bold. Woo, shrub. I kinda like the one there because it has no holes in it. It's like picking out a Christmas tree. It has no holes in it, but it's really cute. Yeah. yeah. So I'm getting these beautiful carnation perennials and what's nice about them is they first bloom in spring but then they'll keep blooming through summer and fall so I'll continuously have this gorgeous red pops of color throughout the garden. I want to add some of these. Yeah, it's really pretty. It's a Sunny will bloom. Ooh. It'll bloom all summer long. That's cool. It's bee friendly. It smells really nice. I like the variegated, right? And I thought that like Papa Yellow was kind of fun and Dead Sea. everyone and welcome back to Crowley House. Today I'm back in the cool garden. I'm working a little bit more. I have some more to plant and move around and I thought you'd like to join me. The other day the kids and I went to Owl's Nursery which is this one is up in Wilsonville and we picked out a few things not only for this garden here but also we are redoing Riley's back porch for her birthday which will be next video. <laughs> It's going to be amazing. It's going to be a full on makeover. So you're not going to want to miss next week's video. Today, I'm out early in the morning. This is my favorite time of the day to come work. And I think it is for any gardener. It's just that witching hour that just makes you fall in love with your garden again, or sometimes hate it because there's so much to do and it can be overwhelming and look like daunting. But today I'm in love with my space. I'm in love with the garden. This morning is beautiful. We have a light drizzle and it smells very fresh out, very spring. There's a lot of sensory going on, which is kind of cool. So I am going to show you what I got and I'm gonna show you what I've done. So I've done some stuff, not on camera, so I thought I would just take you through a little bit of what we have done so far. fountain has fallen over several times is a little cattywankas. It does fine in the spring um, before it starts getting really warm. Then I have to add a lot of water to it because it leaks slowly. And then with the evaporation of the sun and all that kind of stuff, it just becomes a little bit of a labor of love. So then I just turn it off. So I'd like to get something back there that actually maybe has a bit of color or something like that that's going to really shine, but not too much color. So that's the balance. And that's why it's taken me so long to find something. You know, water fountains are funny because you want them to look somewhat natural. So I was thinking maybe just do a bubbler or something with a really pretty pot, but I don't want anything that like stands out too much. So I don't know. Undecisive, I guess at this time. So if you have any suggestions, please comment below. Let me know what is a good source or a place or what you think would look really pretty back there. You know, with the sauna, that's a, that's an actual sauna and it's got the wood rounds making this beautiful. I used to hate it, but now I kind of like it with that sauna back there. It's pretty dark. And then we have the hedgerow that is green. And so it's kind of like, it's going to get lost a little bit. So I, it has to have some color, I guess. Anyways, my job today, continue planting on some of the starts that we got at the nursery.
So I broke down and bought a Cory Dallas porcelain blue. This color just drew me. My gosh, look at that. I mean, and what happens is it blooms now and then it blooms later in summer. And then the foliage is kind of that gray blue color and it is just a stunner. So I got three of these to pop in the garden. And then I also have some ferns uh, that I got that I planted up at the front porch when I did the front porch makeover. That one, um, I just left them in pots because I wanted to move them out into the shade garden and pop something new because that's always exciting to do this time of year when you're going out and finding like I love fuchsias they're one of my favorites and so I just want some fuchsias up there and a few other things so I had a plan in mind when I put those ferns in and now I'm going to move them out today in here I also have some creeping thyme that I'm going to put down I bought some from a friend of mine and I'm gonna where that alleyway is I'm going to go ahead and fill that in with some of that creeping thyme and hopefully that will take over we'll see I was thinking about just loading this up with some creeping thyme. It's got that little blue flower that pops up and it almost, um, well, it is a ground cover, but it almost acts like grass. And then you can step on it as well. It's got this beautiful fragrance that when you come through, I can imagine, oh, tending the garden in the morning or something and you just kind of step on it. it. Smells amazing. I have a love for scented geranium and that's kind of how I envision this being is like when I go to cut scented geranium, that smell, and not everybody loves that, I know. But that smell, it's just, oh, there's something about it that just gets you. I am going to try the thyme here. This other rock path that goes out to the water fountain, which I brought the hose out to kind of clean it up when I'm all done. But I have some of the moss, the Spanish moss, I think it is. Irish moss. I think it's Irish moss that is lined through here. Really, really pretty. And it's starting to take off. I planted a whole bunch of it and some of it has died over the years but now it's starting to kind of fill in. Then what I can do is just separate out chunks of it and kind of fill in those rocks over the years. Let me show you what we did or what I did the other night. God, I worked until like eight o'clock at night. Oh, I hurt the next day, but um, it was so worth it. I moved some things around. I'm gonna show you what I did. So right here where we planted those hostas together the other day, I went ahead and planted in some peach fox love because I had extra. There's a whole bunch of it out in the garden, but this is just a few extra plugs that I plugged in through here. Really, really nice. I think it's what it's gonna do is kind of help shade these hostas. I find that um, sometimes we will get some pretty scorcher days and the leaves will brown just a tad. So I'm trying to find things that might give a little bit of a filtered light to it. So anyways, I don't know. It, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. And of course, you know, gardens are all about moving things, trying things and seeing how it works for you. And then kind of figuring out another plan for the next year. And I think that's what keeps it exciting. So the next thing I did was cut back all of the little ferns through here. Um, I kind of left my mess here and that's okay. I'm gonna kind of scoosh it off to the edge here so that if a fern decides to grow it can do that because more ferns the better in my book but anyways i just cut back all the ferns i just put a little fresh compost down and then cleared this area a little bit more i also had a sarcococcus right here so i had another one right here which i had three of them all together so there was one tucked back here and you can barely see it you could smell it you know in the early or late winter, but there was another one right here. And then I have a third one here next to the porch. So I left this one here because it's fine. It's, it's totally okay. The ones that were over here were just too crowded. You couldn't see them and they were just really small. So what I did was I moved them over here. So I have two of the sarcococas here. I think what's gonna happen, oh, well, actually what happened was we had a really, really cold spell. And so they didn't like it very well. They, some of them dropped their leaves. This one looks a lot better. This one, just not very nice. It's coming back. It's gonna be beautiful. But I think up against the studio wall, it's gonna like it a little bit better, a little bit more sheltered. But I don't know, we'll see how they go. This little garden was the thing that I tackled the other day. Graydon laid down some fresh bark along the pathway and then I was just clearing out, weeding out, and I think I'm gonna put the rest, I have a few more of those foxgloves, so I thought I would pop those in today as well from here. 
here. I have a big makeover planned for this little shop, this little studio of mine, and it's been a long time coming. So I am, I have the paint for it. It's probably gonna come up in the next couple videos from now, but we're gonna just give this a little facelift. And so that's gonna be kind of fun. I have this idea in he my head and we're just gonna go for it. And I think it's gonna turn out absolutely stunning. I am going to get a sign made for above the studio as well, and then just redesign the whole inside of the studio. Okay, back to gardening. <laughs> I'm, you can tell I'm really excited about doing this makeover because I have been and saving pennies and buying little things just to be able to do it in one fail swoop which will be a whole week of work but I think it's just gonna be excellent when it turns out just ugh, like I imagine They don't look like much. I'll clean them up. There's new little baby fronds you can see. You can see the new little fronds coming up here. So I'm gonna cut these back. Look at, there's another one. This is an East India Holly, which gets pretty big actually. So these get 12 to 24 inches high. So they'll get pretty big. So I'm gonna find a little spot for them to show off in the garden and uh, get them cleaned up. And then we had some hellebores in here as well, which are the green variety. I'm gonna get those in, clean up the leaves. And uh, yeah, we'll be redoing these shortly. I do have some pukra that I thought I might pull out, but I'm kind of liking it. Oh, this is hard. I might leave those in, we'll see. All right, let's get at it. I have two green hellebores that I'm going to, they're kind of a green white hellebore, and I have another very mature one right over here. So I thought that we would just do a grouping of three right in this area where I took that sarcococcus out. So I think I'm just gonna hop one right here because this will have winter interest as well. And maybe one right here. That. And then I think I'm gonna fill in with a couple of the ferns through maybe one there and one here because they do get kind of big and they are evergreen as well. And I feel like back where these irises are, that that dies back in the wintertime and it kind of looks a little bare. So if I tuck it up closer to them, that'll kind of add a little bit of interest as well. You're always thinking ahead to the next season, or in this case, couple seasons. this is gonna be all full and there's gonna be no way a weed can grow, right? <laughs> Isn't that the plan? So I'm gonna dig my holes first and then add a little bit of fertilizer, some compost and get them all cozy in their new homes. Look how root bound that is. Maybe this wasn't a good idea of me leaving them in the pots, but little slug. Um, I'm gonna give it a whirl. That's pretty bad. We'll see. Mother nature can do amazing things. Hellebore are one of those that I don't think they like to be replanted very easily. So we'll see. It, you can tell it's definitely outgrown its pot, but it's got some new little shoots coming down. You can see at the bottom that are nice and white. So we'll see. Okay, so now let's go see where we're gonna put those Corydalis uh, blue, beautiful porcelain blues. Oh my gosh, they're so pretty. I just have them sitting here in the garden, just kind of eyeing the color to see like where it's gonna look best. And I think I have a plan for it right now. We'll see. So anyways, let's go lay it out and see what we think. So what I'm thinking to do is kind of line them along this pathway and maybe do like a stagger. So one here, one right here, and then one back there. So I'm gonna lay it out and see what I think.
So from what I've read about this cute little plant is that it is good for kind of borders or edges because it's only about 10 inches or so that it will grow to height wise. So I'm liking it a lot kind of towards the edge. I have some allium in here that are just starting to bloom and last year, I mean, I think every gardener has done that unless you actually know, but allium, the foliage starts to die back before the blooms come up. And so it kind of looks a little unsightly. So I'm wondering if this will kind of help mask that. We did put in some uh, Jack Frost Silver Brunia and then we also put in a white, low growing uh, forget me not. And so that's kind of come in really nicely through here. So I think the combination is gonna work pretty well. If not, I'm not sure what we'll do. We'll probably put some more, like maybe an evergreen or something like that through here, kind of help with those alliums or move the alliums. My husband hates that. He said that to me the other day. He's like, Beth, why do you constantly move everything everywhere? And I'm like, that's just a garden. It's just how it is. You just are constantly moving and shifting and that's what's fun about it. Okay, so let's get these guys in the ground. I think I really like this. I think it's it's gonna look really good together. Okay, I'm on it. shells on just for a slug control. We have filbert orchards all around us and because the Pacific Northwest is generally known for having a couple months of heavy heavy rain which we're just coming out of you know the slugs love this time of year so using the shells really helps keep down on the slug damage that can occur. So I'm going to keep that nestled up right close to the edge. I'll probably have to put some slug bait down anyways but yeah I mean some people use it like as a pathway and it just has a nice crunch to it. The only problem is, is that you have to wear like a, a shoe or something like that because you can't be earthing or going barefoot along the shells because they are quite owie if you step on them. Okay, let's get the other three in. I'm liking this a lot. I'll get those watered in here shortly. Got the hose ready. really heavy clay here so that's why we use so much compost is just I find it helps every year to just add a layer and then the soil has just gotten better and better and better and then the plants are happier and happier so it's expensive to get compost for the most part um, every year but I just budget for it and it makes my life so much happier and easier to garden so it's well worth it that I did anything here in this pathway where this creeping time is, but I think over time, <laughs> no pun intended, you will be able to see this just carpet coming through here. Almost like a little river, I think. So I'm hoping that it takes. I did put compost fertilizer, the starting fertilizer, and so I'm just gonna get everything watered in. I have to water in all the little, um, the new little baby plants that we just planted. And then I wanna just wash the stone off, just make this garden look a little bit better. And then I'm just gonna leave it alone other than coming out once a week to kind of control the weeds. And uh, I, think, I think it's gonna look really good over time. That's what gardens take, time. 
sometimes people don't have the patience for that, me included. Okay, so let's get the hose out and get watering. <laughs> you guys could see this garden in person because I don't ever think a camera can do justice for what is in actual real life. So let's take just a quick break away from this garden and check in with Riley. She has got a load of flowers and I just want to go through everything that she got for her back porch redesign which is going to be next week's video and I just wanted to show you what we got. So it's so so fun. to my house chaos is beginning pretty much it's my birthday week guys you can all say happy birthday to me so it's my birthday week and I requested for my birthday present to do a bit of a project here on the yurt pretty much I have this big back patio that's just sitting there and it's not ugly but it's just sitting there and I really want to use it right um, living here in the summertime it gets extremely hot especially inside the yurt and so I want to have a space that I can like hang out in that's outside during the summertime when it's very very warm so to do that we decided to do a big family project for my birthday and so for that we got a bunch of plants that are just gonna beautify as you can see I have all these pots too that I've been collecting that are also gonna go in the garden but I thought I would just kind of go through a couple of the fun things I got and then you'll see more of it next week in like the reveal video so my color palette I was going with my pots are all very like neutrals. Pretty much I'm trying to do this almost Mediterranean French countryside garden with lots of herbs and flowers that are going to brighten up the space and make it really cozy. Going in warm tones, I have a lot of beautiful shades of red and pinks and a pop of yellow and then I of course I wanted a lot of lavender in here and I have some rosemary I'm going to be transplanting to. I want lots of herbs um, throughout the whole thing so it can be almost like a protege cooking garden and I also got some beautiful grass here that is going to have those little bunny tails and I just thought that would bring in some beautiful interest into the garden. This big boy is a emerald colonnade holly. Again, kind of bringing in that Mediterranean feel with lots of fun green structures. I wanted some a lot of evergreens to go in so that it's staying beautiful all year round. The goal is to like kind of have a seasonal garden that's going to be changing with the seasons. These are gorgeous and they, um, I'm hoping to get a couple more of them as they go. They're a little expensive for my little budget, but one I think is going to just really bring the space together, kind of having a main focal point in there along with all the gorgeous flowers. I'm excited to see how it all comes together. I mean, this has kind of like been a dream of mine for like since I moved into the yurt. So I'm really excited that it's actually happening. And I'm really excited for you guys to all see it come together. My vision. It's gonna be fun. I'm excited. Well, that's it for this week's video. We hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please like and subscribe down below. And we'd love to hear from you down in the comments. Stay tuned for next week as we continue on with Riley's back porch redesign it's going to be so amazing and we'd love to have you join us and see all the things that we're going to do there 
Okay, well, until next time, much success in all you do and grow, and we'll be seeing you shortly back here at Crowley House very soon. Bye-bye.